Today I'm making penne alla genovese, pasta alla genovese, not to be confused with pesto alla genovese. It's a delicious onion-based sauce. Uh, it's a different type of dish. Well, for me, it was very different. I'm gonna show you the ingredients right now. So right here we have pancetta. Pancetta is kind of important to a lot of Italian dishes. So, But if you don't wanna use pancetta, you can use salami for this. You can start it with prosciutto. In fact, you can start it with none of that if you don't want to. But I recommend that you do use some type of pork fat flavoring agent to start it. Okay, number two, Parmigiano Reggiano. Parmigiano Reggiano is not gonna be in the dish. We're not gonna cook the cheese in it. It's gonna be to finish it. Now, you know, optional to use it or not, but I really like it. This is an onion-based sauce, and to say it uses a lot of onions would be an understatement. And I, it's gonna use five pounds of onions for one pound of pasta, so it's a lot. It's gonna cook down. I got two big onions here from Costco. I bought a 10 pound bag. I already did most of the chopping. You know, you don't wanna see me cut, you know, chop five pounds of onions. We got a carrot and we got celery. Okay, penne. Uh, traditionally, this dish is, you use ziti uh, for it and you use a long ziti and then you crack it, you break it. Uh, penne is a great substitute. It's what I'm gonna use for this, but uh, rigatoni, uh, any, any pasta you want actually would work well with it. Okay, here's my chuck roast. Now, you don't have to use chuck for this. You could use stew beef, any type of stew beef, top round, bottom round, anything like that. It's gonna cook for a long time, so it's going to get tender and you'll be able to shred it. Now, a lot of, a lot of recipes, not, not a, I shouldn't say a lot, there's barely any information about this online. Um, but the, some of the recipes will have it where you don't even, all you do is sear this, you don't even chop it into pieces, and then you just use this as a second course. I prefer it shredded, and put into the pasta. But again, that's, you know, that's a personal preference thing. White wine. This is uh, Pinot Grigio. Any dry white wine would be fine. Final three ingredients, salt, pepper, olive oil. You see how much fat there is in here? So like a huge piece of fat like that you can remove. All the ingredients to this is in the description, the recipe card, everything. The way I'm making it today is exactly how it is there. So there's no deviation. See like this big chunk of fat here? This one, you don't want that. Okay, same thing again. Huge amount of fat there. You only need about, I'm using, this is a little less than two pounds, this cut. You only need, you can, you can use less than that. You can use, you can use just one pound. And it's funny, I posted this recipe in a Facebook group, um, an Italian Facebook group, and somebody said that, you know, this dish is from Naples, and the person who posted was, is from Naples, and they said that they use, they use pork there as well to make this dish. And I thought that was a nice idea, and it's something I didn't think of to make it with. I got nice pancetta here. Yeah, what makes, so I got the pancetta, I got, this is that from Whole Foods, okay, it's a nice pancetta. Have the guy at the counter cut it a quarter inch thick for you. And then by doing that, it makes it a lot easier. You know, if you buy the little, if you little buy the little dice stuff, and I'm not saying, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just, this is better quality. And to make it real easy, which I didn't do, to cut this, you can put it in the freezer for about 15 minutes prior to using it. Same thing with guanciale, you do this, you know, exact same thing. Okay, we're just basically cubing it. This dish is gonna cook for three hours, so this is all gonna cook down. Do your onions last, because your eyes are gonna start watering. Yeah, I got this 10 pound bag of onions from Costco specifically for this recipe, because these are big onions. We have our beef right here and we're going to salt and pepper it. Before we do that, take a paper towel or two. Let's pat it really dry because we wanna get a nice sear. We're only gonna put salt and pepper on right before we sear it because if we do it early, the salt's gonna draw. It's gonna take moisture out of the beef and it's gonna make it wet again because we want it when it hits that cast iron, you know, the Dutch oven that I'm gonna use. We want it to be, um, we wanna get a nice sear. Okay, and don't be shy with salt and pepper here. Use the, you know, your pepper grinder if you have one. Cast iron takes a little bit to uh, get warm. Once it does get hot, then it will hold its temperature better then. But if you don't have a Dutch oven like this, use um, like a big stock pot, you know, sauce pot or whatever, and that'll be fine too. You need a big pot for this because of all the onions. Everything's gonna go up to the top and then it's all gonna reduce. Okay, it's gonna take two batches because I don't wanna, um, I don't want to crowd the beef. It got splashed. Be careful too that you don't get splashed like I just did. Okay, so that's pretty good. I'm gonna start removing these pieces. Get the second batch in. 
That's all done. All the meat is done. Right now, we're going to put the pancetta in. Now, I lowered the heat. When you lower your heat on your cast iron, it's going to take a little while for it to catch up to the downside. I already got the beef fat in here. I don't need to add any more fat. I don't need to add any more olive oil. The pancetta is going to release all of its fat soon. See, like pancetta, just like guanciale, has a lot of fat in it. Anyway, we're going to let this go for about five minutes. See how much fat is, come, is down in there? It's like the same type of pancetta is what you use for bolognese when you start your bolognese. Pancetta is looking nice and crisp, but not too much. We're gonna take our celery, we're gonna add that in. And like I said before, you don't have to use, there's no order to this. Celery and carrots can go in at the same time. Okay, we're just gonna let these cook for a couple minutes. Say about five minutes on about medium to medium low. This is such a great dish. I think you're gonna love it. Okay, so now we're ready for the end part and the end part takes about three hours. First thing we're gonna do is get some wine in. Pinot Grigio, gonna do about a cup. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get with a wooden spoon, definitely a wooden spoon, not a metal spoon. I'm just gonna remove all the flavor bits on the bottom. You don't even need to boil this out. You can if you want, but this is gonna cook for three hours. All the alcohol is gonna be evaporated. Okay, our big, big thing of onions. So I think this is like a six quart Dutch oven and it just, it will just fit the five pounds of onions and the one and a half to two pounds of chuck. Give this a little stir, just coat it, coat, coat them with the uh, pancetta fat beef. Okay, and the drippings, I'm gonna add it back in here. Final thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add one cup of water right now, or even a little bit more, it doesn't matter. We don't want the onions to burn. You can, move, you can push the meat down, it doesn't really matter. You can leave it on top. We're gonna to turn our heat to low, gentle simmer. We're gonna use a heavy lid. I'm gonna close it. We're gonna let this cook for three hours. Every 30 minutes, we're gonna come back, maybe even 20 minutes, we're gonna open it up. We're gonna check. You, gotta, you wanna avoid burning. Okay, so it's been going for about an hour. I already checked it once, but you really wanna check it like every 20 or 30 minutes. Okay. So you see the onions now, see how they look. They're getting, starting to get soft. All right, so now I'm about two and a half hours in. We're pretty much getting towards the end here. So you see how there's like a lot of liquid in still in here still. Now the onions released a lot of liquid. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove my beef pieces right now. I'm gonna put them off to the side. Now this can be a second dish or you can shred it like I'm going to do and add it back in. I'm gonna raise the heat now to about medium about medium to medium high. We're gonna cook all the liquid out of this. Right when you start this process, put up pasta, put up your pasta water, get it going so you can kind of time it and get your pasta at the same time. And remember, like the beef can be optional, it can be served on the side. Okay, so off to the side, I just shredded all this beef up. Now you can use forks, double forks, or you can just do it with your hands. I did it with my hands, it's, it's easier, it's quicker that way. And then, you know, if you get a little piece of fat, like there might be a little piece of fat there, just take it, you know, and just toss it. But we wanna pull more of this liquid out. We're gonna pull all the liquid out, I'm gonna get this like creamy onion sauce, and then what we're gonna do is when we dress our pasta, save our pasta water, and then we'll add a little bit of that beef, and if we need to add a touch of pasta water into the pasta to loosen it up a tiny bit, we'll do that. All right, that's good. Move this, this out of here. Okay, that's like pretty much like looking like the perfect consistency right there. So I hope you guys enjoyed pasta alla Genovese. It's a simple one, it just takes a while. You know, you saw the ingredients, it's, it's just a few ingredients in this one, predominantly onions. Subscribe to this channel, like, share, do all that good stuff, it really helps me out. Leave a comment, let me know the next recipe you want me to make, I will be sure to do it. Until next time, see ya.